Hi and welcome to History of Legends. In this video, we'll do a step-by-step -step historical breakdown of the El Alamein mission in the latest Call of Duty Vanguard. Are you ready? Let's go. Let's go. So these are Crusader tanks with uh, troops on top. They have. The Brody helmet, the British uniform, that's great. Um, quick pause. Crusader tanks were fast moving armored vehicles meant for breakthroughs. So infantry would rather sit on heavier tanks like the Valentines, the Matilda IIs, or the Churchills. Okay, for now, Battle of El Alamein, October 1942. It fits the bill. Pretty good. Okay, there's one thing. Every mission starts like that. They're just casually talking, a little banter, a little chat. We know they're gonna get ambushed. Wait for it. So they have weird accents. Uh, Australian, maybe South African. <laughs> Bro, it sounds like McGregor. Oh, what did I tell you? Of course. We know Call of Duty mission when they're just talking casually as if nothing is going to happen and boom, they're hit. What was that? <laughs> what? Oh my God. Wait, hold on. What did he say? Could someone please bugger that RPG? I think the guy who wrote this script for this mission they don't understand that this is not modern warfare. This is taking place in World War II. The first real RPG, the RPG-2, was only put in service in 1954. And it stands for this Russian word, which stands for handheld anti-tank grenade launcher. And then using the same acronym RPG, it turned into rocket propelled grenade. So really, I don't know how serious I should take this mission already. Like we're a few seconds in and it's already disappointing. Okay. In North Africa, it most it's mostly 88 millimeter flak that destroyed a lot of British vehicles. So I don't understand why they're panicking because it doesn't seem the Germans have any anti-tank weapons. So, the tanks are pretty much safe. Unless the Germans have tanks somewhere, but it doesn't seem like it. Okay, Lee, infield. Okay, I like how when you throw the grenade, you can't see the arch. Okay, Lee, infield. Okay, that's accurate. For the time period. Okay, the way to reload it seems pretty good. Wait, hold on. <laughs> Wait, what did I just see? Let's watch this again. The infield. Okay. Again, a silly inaccuracy that could have been prevented. You see, this is a five round clip that you put into the Lee infield. Actually, it could chamber 10 rounds into five round clips. I hope I explained it properly. I'm not the biggest gun expert, but from what I see, it's uh, pretty bad. The fact that it, you have to reload every five rounds, very bad. Usually tanks would have some sort of emblem on their side to identify which unit they belong to. So in my opinion, these tanks look legit, but they look a bit bland. They're all the same, yeah. It's still weird though that we play as infantry in one of the biggest tank battles in history. And I hope these guys are gonna enter a tank at some point. I hope so. <laughs> what? Okay, an STG 44 in 1942. Makes total sense. However, we have good news. Although it's historically inaccurate, 
if we have an STG44 in 1942, we might even see an AK-47 in the game. But this guy seems to have some Maori tattoo. So maybe he's a Maori soldier. I don't know the story of the game. So let me know in the comment section. That would be cool. A mission with Maori troops in North Africa. KMP40. Okay, so that's accurate. This is the basic, right? Itra Burst. So I looked it up and in real life, the Itra Burst is actually the Breda PG. It was in the town prototype. And what makes this PG special, it's that it's the world's first burst firing automatic rifle. Not many were produced, but around 400 of these rifles were issued to Costa Rica. The fact that this weapon is a prototype doesn't bother me. It falls into the scope of World War II. However, what does bother me is that this is an Italian weapon and we haven't seen any Italian troops yet. I hope we're going to see some further in the mission, but at El Alamein, the bulk of the infantry was Italian. I just hear McGregor speaking. <laughs> is this an Irishman? A mission about Irish soldiers that enlisted, volunteered in the British Army would be epic. We never talk about these Irish volunteers. Oh my God. Oh my God. I, I'm dying right now because I'm old enough to remember that this point of view we just saw where they cross this mountain pass and see the tank battle happening below them is literally a copy of the Castrine Pass mission in Call of Duty 2, the Big Red 1. And I do remember it because it's the first Call of Duty I've ever played. I'll try to put some footage for you to compare. So of course the graphics are not the same in Call of Duty 2, but at least we start the mission in an American tank. And not any tank, an M3 Stuart. That's super rare. We barely see it in World War II movies or whatever. So it's pretty interesting that we actually control it in the mission. Again, I still hope that at some point in this mission, we'll enter a tank. With that being said, the range of the bow, the tanks, it's 50 meters. It's totally unrealistic. I mean, tank engagements would take place at 300, 500, one kilometer away. Not literally, literally can't speak English. Yeah, you, you see the, the tanks are too close to one another. At least they have little flags, it's great to show which unit they belong to, but they're too close to one another, too close to the Germans. What's the point of having this cannon if you can't shoot more than 50 meters away? The other thing I noticed right now is that we see what seems to be Australian troops. So you see these soldiers, they have these typical Australian hats. And I agree, it looks cool. But if you look at pictures from Australian troops at El Alamein, they all have the British Brody helmet. And they only wore these hats when they were away from the front line. <laughs> what? Oh, what is this for a weapon? Anyway. 100 round drum. All right. Okay, you see another thing that's highly unrealistic. You call in an airstrike on your own position, like literally 10 meters away, there's not a chance that these bombers were precise enough to target an area that close to your own troops. At least if these aircraft could bomb an area at least 500 meters away, one kilometer away would make sense. At this point, it seems to me like a modern warfare game with a World War II coding because an air strike like that, impossible during World War II. At least the, the walking behind the tanks to get cover. So that part is okay. 
Okay, the German tanks, they're literally blind. <laughs> the German tanks are blind. I don't get it. They're literally in front. Is this fury? It's fury, I swear. They can't fire around. Okay, you see the, the flak cannons on top of this ridge? These would have been perfect as anti-tank weapons. That's how the Germans actually use them. You see, that's... I see the hats again. But you see, this is what I, I don't like in these modern World War II themed games is that you all, always play some special ops guys that win the battle by themselves. Oh, am I dreaming? What is this for setup? Roman ruins during the battle of El Alamein? No, they fought in the middle of a desert. Uh, even this bridge and everything, no way you could find this in the Libyan desert. <laughs> okay, the fact that they're ruins, I think it confirms our theory that it's actually a copy of the Castrin Pass mission. Okay, check this out. So we first had this point of view that it's pretty much the same as in the Castrian Pass mission, Call of Duty 2. Then we have the Roman ruins, and then they fight in a mountain. At El Alamein there were ridges, but not mountains like that. And when you look at actual pictures of El Alamein, it's mostly flat ground. Okay, I, I hate to see that, that, that shotgun. Like only hundred were what? <laughs> Wait, hold on. Our car ninety eight with magazine. Well done, well done, Vanguard. I'm proud of you. You keep impressing me. Yeah. So the ruins, like this is Tunisia. This is Tunisia. <laughs> what? Okay, a Falschturmgewehr. Okay, the Falschturmgewehr. Impossible that it was there in nineteen forty two. It was only put in service in late 1944. My bad, it was designed in late 1944, but introduced in early 1945, and only 10,000 were actually produced. In the mission taking place during the Battle of Berlin, it makes sense to see this weapon around, but not in El Alamein 1942, no. And this is what I find disappointing in this game, is that you use weapons that are anachronistic to their time period. Oh, it keeps getting better. A double drum MP40. How convenient. <laughs> Ridiculous. Wait. Okay, that's right. I wasn't sure. A Gewehr 43 in 1942 again. Why would you even set and create an entire mission in 1942 and litter the ground with weapons that were not even invented at that time? Okay, the ruins. The ruins get bigger and bigger. Impossible to find this in the desert. Okay, flak. I don't know why. They don't want to make these flak cannons fire at anti-tank, as anti-tank weapons. I, I don't get it. Oh my god, what is this? You have literally a grenade launcher in World War II. So if we have this grenade launcher, I want to see an RPG-7. Okay, check this out. OP, it's, it's OP. Like If you use a bolt-action rifle, this mission would have been hard, but using a grenade launcher, OP. Oh, and then you have a double barrel, uh, double drum, MP40. Come on, OP. What's next? We're gonna have a Dragonov, 50 cal. Honestly, should put claymores, use a Dragonov, and just stay there. 
Uh, it's so easy to move around with this MG42. You don't even have to position it. Like, you can't just fire immediately. No problem. Oh, my bad. I said it was an MP40. It's a Fahrsturmgewehr with 60 round drums. Ah, who cares about history, right? Honestly, if you want to use the MG42 in a game, at least make it super inconvenient. It's heavy, you have to position it, otherwise the accuracy, there's literally no accuracy. Okay, Panzerfaust, okay, of course, of course. Why didn't I expect a Panzerfaust in this game? At this point, everything is possible, right? And you, why seeing a Panzerfaust makes me actually mad. You see the Germans develop the Panzerschreck as a response to the American bazooka that they actually found during the Tunisian campaign. This mission doesn't make any sense in a LLMA October 1942 setup. You know, had they been using a bazooka in this mission, it would have made much more sense. Imagine some guys arrive in reinforcements with bazookas and they use them to destroy the German tanks. Okay, because the weapon existed already. Anyway, let's keep going. Panzerfaust nonsense. Oh, and you reload it, of course. Oh, just you can just reload the Panzerfaust. The Panzerfaust was a single shot disposable weapon. The fact that it reloads, it's totally dumb. And if you want to make this mission at least a bit accurate, whenever you shoot a Panzerfaust, you have to go back to the boxes, pick up a new one and fire again. Oh, and it ends with the bombers destroying everything, literally like in Call of Duty 2. It literally has the same ending, I can't believe it. I'm very disappointed at this mission. It's, I think, one of the biggest waste of potential. First of all, the mission takes place during LLMA and you do not enter a single tank. You play as infantry. The North African campaign in the desert has to be enjoyed in an armored vehicle. Then you have the fact that this mission is literally copied from an old Call of Duty. But it also shows they have a serious lack of imagination. Like, I don't know who's writing these missions but these guys don't know history. They only copy things from the past. I don't know what's happening. But the other thing that I don't like is the anachronistic use of weapons. For example, weapons that were made in 1944, 1945, you find them in 1942. And of course, the fact that you don't see the Italians at all during the Battle of El Alamein is a bit uh, insulting. With that being said, that's all I have for you today. Let me know in the comment section what you thought about my analysis. If you're new to this channel, don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you want to help me create more content, consider joining my Patreon link in the description.